This PowerPoint covers odds and probability as well as mathematical expectations. So there's two parts to this PowerPoint. It will cover theoretical and subjective probability, odds for and odds against, and expected gain and fairness. So if we begin with the first part, I'm going to give you definitions for three different types of probability. The first one is theoretical probability. What is the possibility that the event will occur? We find this number by using math mathematical reasoning. And we calculate this as the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. Where when I say number of favorable outcomes, I just mean like what it is that you are looking for over the total number of things that there are. When you draw a marble from a bag containing three yellow, two blue, and eight red marbles, theoretical probability of the event drawing a yellow marble is, so there are three yellows, and there are a total of 13 marbles. So the probability of you picking a yellow over the total number of marbles is 3 over 13. And an example of this is known as um, theoretical probability. The second type of probability I'm going to explain to you is called experimental probability, whose keyword is experiment. Um, it is obtained following an experimentation. So it is done when theoretical probability is impossible to calculate. You can't just do this on one try. In this case, the number of times the expected outcome has occurred over the number of times the experiment was repeated is how you calculate experimental probability. So some examples would be how many times a tennis player successfully completed their first serves over a number of tries. So if over like 50 tries they've completed maybe 25 first serves, the probability would be 25 over 50 or 50%. 50 Another example would be the amount of goals scored over repetitive shots on a goalie, whether it's a soccer goalie or a hockey goalie. It doesn't matter. Um, if they shot a certain amount of shots, you can calculate the percentage by the amount of goals that they actually scored on um, the goalie. The last one that I need to tell you about is subjective probability. It is an event based on the judgment or perception held by a person who has a certain set of information about the situation or random experiment. So it's subjective towards the person because the person was knowledgeable about that subject. For example, there is a 60% probability of showers tomorrow. It is subjective because the person who is telling you this is probably a meteorologist, so he probably knows a lot more about the subject than, say, in any other person. Another example would be that there is a 1 over 3030 to 1 over 2700 probability that the asteroid 2007 VK187 will collide with the Earth between 2048 and 2057. And before you start freaking out, you can calculate the probabilities and I can tell you that they're very, very low. However, the person who is probably saying this, this probability is subjective because they have studied it. Let's talk about odds 4. The odds for an event is shown by the reaction of the number of desirable outcomes to the number of possible undesirable outcomes. It is usually seen as a ratio, but we can calculate it as the number of possible desirable outcomes over or to the number of possible undesirable outcomes. An example would be that the odds for a local team winning the tournament are 3 to 2. This means that the local team has three chances to win and two chances to lose, so desirable to undesirable. Odds against is exactly the same thing as odds for, except the odds against come first in the ratio instead of second. So instead you have undesirable over or too desirable. The odds against a player who bets on a zero in roulette are 36 to 1. This, mean that, this means that the player has 36 chances to lose and one chance to win. If you wanted to do it opposite and say the odds for, it would be 1 to 36. The difference between odds and probability. Probability is the number of favorable outcomes over the favorable outcomes plus unfavorable. In other words, probability is favorable outcomes over total number of outcomes. Odds is not like this. Odds is favorable over unfavorable or unfavorable over favorable. We don't care about the total number of outcomes. Here's an example. The odds that Mika wins the golf tournament are 4 to 3. This means the same thing as the following statements. The odds for Mika winning the golf tournament are 4 to 3. So therefore, the odds against him winning the tournament are the opposite, 3 to 4. The probability that Mika wins the golf tournament is, in this case, um, 4 over 
the, the odds that he wins is four over seven, and the probability that Mika does not win the golf tournament is three over seven. These are blank because in your handout, I would like you to write it out so that you know and that you remember. Betting for gain. Now, before I continue with this uh, lesson, what you need to understand is that a lot of the times, mathematical expectation, fairness, odds, and odds and probability work when you bet on certain games, so gambling. Now, although I'll be talking about certain games that you see in a casino and that you bet and gamble on, I'm obviously not encouraging you to do that. Um, and I will, in fact, show you why it's very bad to do that because you will lose a lot of money because the probabilities are pretty much against you. It is very popular for people to gamble on sports teams. The odds that a local soccer team win the next game are 5 to 4. So if you want to bet that a person will win, so you bet $10, well the odds of them winning are 5 over 4. So you would do 10 over whatever you would get. And if you cross multiply, you get the amount that you win is $8. But you're also getting your initial bet back. So, your person, the, so the person who bets this will actually win 8 plus the $10 initial bet, so $18. Say you want to bet that the team will lose. Well, instead, that's 4 over 5, and you're betting um, over losing, so you're going over the losing odds here. Um, and in this case, the amount to win is twelve fifty. And if you add that to the 10 initial bet, you will win $22.50. So if you think about it, the amount to win for um, losing is a lot more than the amount to win if you're betting on winning. Why do you think that is? Well there's a much higher chance for you to win if you bet on them winning than there is of you winning if you bet on them losing. So because of that, because you're betting on something that has a lower probability of actually giving you money, you'll make more money when it happens. Now we're going to talk about mathematical expectation. We are going to learn how to calculate when a game is fair and or unfair. Mathem mathematical expectation is a number obtained when you multiply the value of a random number by the probability of obtaining that number. This method of calculation is used a lot with games that you use money to bet on. Say you have a set of values that is omega, 1, 2, 7, and 8, and I tell you that the probability of getting 1 is 15%, the probability of getting 2 is 20%, 7 is 25%, and 8 is 40%. To calculate the mathematical expectation, multiply the variable by its probability in decimal form. So 1 times 0 0.15, 2 times 0 0.2, 7 times 0 0.25, and 8 times 0.4. And in the end, you get that the mathematical expectation of this set of values is 5.5. In the case of a game that you bet on, you can calculate what's called the expected gain, meaning what you can expect to win based on the probabilities of winning and losing the game. Some wording that you need to know, net gain, is the money you receive minus the initial bet that you made. For example, if you bet 10 and you win 15, you actually get $5 back. Loss is the money you use to bet on that you will lose if the game doesn't go in your favor. This is how we calculate expected gain. The probability of winning times your net gain plus the probability of losing times your loss. And in this case, your gain, your net gain, is your gain minus the initial bet. So if you won $20 but you bet $15, you only get $5. The initial bet with a negative sign in front of it is your loss. So, it's, so whatever you bet on, it's minus that. Some examples here. In a game of roulette, a person betting on a winning number receives 35 times the amount of the bet plus the return of the initial bet. Since the roulette wheel has slots numbered from 0 to 36, the probability of a ball falling on a given number is 1 over 37. If a person bets $10, this is how we calculate the expected gain. So in this case, the probability of you winning is 1 over 37 times 35 times 10, because it's 35 times the initial bet, so times 350, because that's how much you're going to gain, plus the amount of probability, sorry, that you will lose, which is 36 over 37, times the loss, so the negative of your bet, so minus 10. So in the end, your answer is negative 0.27. That's the probability of willing, winning, that's 35 times 10, the probability of losing, and the loss of your initial bet. You can get a negative expected gain, and I will explain it to you soon. 
Another example for expected gain. Expected gain is technically calculated the same way we calculated simple mathematical expectation. We have omega and the probability of each of those variables. The mathematical expectation is just each of those times the probability of it winning or getting it. Now let's talk about fairness. The mathematical expectation tells you whether a game is fair or not, whether you are at an advantage or at a disadvantage while playing the game. If your mathematical expectation is less than zero or negative, this is disadvantageous to the player or unfair. If your mathematical expectation is zero, that means that your game is fair. If your mathematical expectation is greater than zero or positive, it is advantageous to the player, but it still could be considered unfair because you have an advantage over another person or over the game. Here's an example. The first time that we did the roulette example, you got an expected gain of negative 0.27 cents or dollars. This means it was disadvantaged to the player and therefore unfair because we got a negative number. Another example is that a game consists of randomly drawing a marble from a set of composed five red, four blue marbles. If a blue marble is drawn, the participant wins $12.50 on top of their initial bet. If a red marble is drawn, the initial $10 bet is lost. Is this game fair? If we calculate it, the probability of winning times the net gain plus the probability of losing times the loss. The probability of winning is 4 over 9, and if we multiply that by the net gain, you will get $12.50 on top of your initial bet. Times the probability of losing times your loss. In this case, it's equal to $0, so therefore it is fair. For $2, a person can participate in a draw for a coupon valued at $50. The probability of winning the, this draw is 1 over 100. Is this fair? The probability of winning this draw is 1 over 100, then the probability of losing is 99 over 100. If you win a coupon valued at $50 and your net gain is going to be 50 minus your two initial bet, so you actually net gain $48. This is what your expected gain um, calculation will look like. And in the end, it is unfair because you get a negative $1.50. So just to recap, you know that the odds of winning and losing are written as a ratio. You also know that the probabilities are written as a fraction over the total amount. And now you know how to calculate expectation by multiplying the value by its probability and adding them all together. You also know how to calculate expected gain by doing the probability of winning times the net gain plus the probability of losing times your net or times your loss. This is an example of the table that you should use as a memory aid so that you know what to get when you have a mathematical expectation of negative, zero, or positive number. And that is the end of expectation and fairness.